Okay, now I would like to do something where I don't have quite as much fun for drawing. Um, I, I mean, I know you and I both love all the drawings that I do. Um, they are really, really helpful. They're, they're much closer to the physics than the math is. Um, but I want to I want to look at something like this where um, we're given a vector potential a and I want to figure out well you know what is the um, current density that makes that right and um, I'll also want to look at this with respect to um, the previous problem that I did and that one, um, how should I say this? In the previous problem, uh, you know, I found the vector potential from a um, particular um, from a particular current distribution. In this case, I want to go the other way. All right. So in this case, we're going to have a um, piecewise piecewise function for our um, vector potential. Um, I'm going to have have it be in the um, in some region where r is less than r in cylindrical coordinates. So this is in cylindrical coordinates. I'm going to have this. Um, be this one over r sort of function, um, but in um, you know when we're on this, so this would sort of be on the inside of a cylinder. On the outside of a cylinder, uh, what I want it to be is this mu naught k r times um, r over r in the theta hat direction. So this is actually a continuation of this um, when r is greater than big R plus um, the natural log of r over r, a little r over big R, excuse me, um, in the z hat direction. So um, we have everything just circulating around on the inside of the cylinder and then on the outside uh, we've got something sort of pushing up along the cylinder. Um, so if I were to draw this out, right, I'd say plot first, um, how much room do I have on each one? Okay, good. I'll plot versus R, and with some, something happening here at big R, I'll have a phi and a z. A phi even though we know this is where the cylinder is, we see no indication of it in in that thing, that thing. But we know that there's some sort of edge of a cylinder or something because in this one we have a five a z looking like this, right? So this is more or less what we're dealing with. So it's good to graph these these functions out so you can see what's going on. Uh, that that might help you out a little bit when you're trying to solve the problem. So if you're given a function, a good idea is right away uh, plot it. Just plot it, see what it looks like. That's that's what we want to do. Um, this is going to be one of these things where I go through and um, find many, many, many things. Uh, the first thing I want to find is the field. The magnetic field B. Um, and then I want to find the source current. And that could be uh, that could be I, that could be K, that could be J. I bet you can guess what it's going to be from the way I labeled it, but hey, we'll figure it out as we go along. And see the gauge with respect to the previous problem. And I think in your notes I labeled that psi. I labeled the gauge psi. 
Okay, so, and, and basically our concept here is the vector potential. And to get all the way down to the current, I'll need Ampere's law. Okay. Um, and we'll use these in differential form this time. So that's sort of how it, how it differs from the last one. Um, so we need a strategy, right? Um, and this is actually really relatively straightforward. It's really just com computation. So one will compute B and hopefully that's far enough down for, for after we have B, we'll compute um, the, the current density. And after that, we'll um, find the gauge. Okay. So everything's really, really straightforward in this case. We'll just use some simple um, use, use some simple rules, right? And I mean, the simplest here is that B is equal to um, del cross A, right? Okay. Um, and if we um, do the curl, right? If we do this curl thing and um, expand it out. It looks kind of like this. You can find this in the back of your book. Um, so it's 1 over r dAz d theta minus dA theta dz in the r hat direction. Okay? Plus, in this is going to be the theta hat direction, dA r dz minus d a z d r right that's in your theta hat direction plus one over r times um d d r times r a theta minus one over r d a r d theta and that's all in the z hat direction okay and if we look up here I, I guess the first thing we notice is that there is there is nowhere that we have any r component so any place that says r like that is zero a little a a little r so the r component of a is zero um now let's see, the z component here only depends on r, so taking the derivative with respect to theta is going to be 0. So this guy's okay. Um, and the theta also depends on r, so this one's 0, but this guy's okay. Okay, so we have two components we have to look at. We just have two components. Um, so we have minus uh, theta hat. D, um, dr, az, az is equal to um, zero below and zero inside, and um, this function of the natural log on the outside. So on the inside, it's just going to be zero, but we have um, this thing to differentiate. And then we have minus, or no, plus 1 over r, d d r, r times um, a f theta, which is mu naught k big R squared over r. Um, so these things cancel. So we have here a derivative of a constant in a um, continuous region, so that's zero. It's important this is continuous. We'll, we'll look at the other case in just a moment. Um, and then we take this derivative, um, and that derivative gives us uh, minus mu naught k r 
um, and we can work it out or we can ignore it um, over R. Okay, so that's working out pretty good. We're all right with that. Um, so that's our B in the theta hat direction. That's pretty good. Uh, now the current density, so we have mu naught j is equal to del cross b. And we only have um, this one, right? All the other ones are going to be zero. So in this case, we have a theta component, right? So we, so we have one over r, ddr, r b theta is the only one we have to worry about. Um, now, if we look at this B theta, if we looked at it correctly, um, it's going to look like this. At big R, it's, it's zero except at, after big R, and it looks like then it looks like that. So there's a discontinuity there, but where there's and here the derivative of zero here. Let's see. Um, so we have one over R, D R, uh, R times minus mu naught K R over R. That guy cancels, and we have a constant times a derivative which is zero. Um, and that means basically that there is no here. There is no. Um, no volume current density but but because there's a discontinuity here there may be a um, there, there may be another current density as well so K we, we you'll remember how we do this you know K is going to be R cross B or Delta B Right. So rather than taking the derivative, now we're going to look at the change from here to here, right? And so that is going to be um, this this part um, this part cancels. So it's only in the z direction that we have any anything good. Or actually, when we come down here, it's in the theta direction. So. Um, so we have r hat cross minus mu naught k r over r um, times theta hat, which is minus mu naught k r over r. And the big spot r, so this is actually big R because we're evaluating it right here. This is actually minus mu naught k. Oh, good. And so basically, um, k is equal to minus k in the z hat direction. All right, r theta z hat. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good. It's looking all right. Um, so the last part we have to do is find this gauge, right? And the gauge will find. Um, by looking at the difference between the two, um, the two gauges, that difference is just this uh, theta component, basically. So that's equal to mu naught k r squared over r, right? In the uh, theta hat direction. And then what we're going to want to do is say that this is equal to del psi. So this is the gradient of psi. And, um, and so this psi is called the gauge. Um, we take our derivative of that, we add it to the um, constant, or add it to the vector potential. Everything's fine. You'll notice that we get our current here being the same current as the previous one. So 
Um, this difference in potentials is just this thing here, and we're ready to go. This looks like the same thing we did with, say, the work energy theorem or something like that, so that we know that psi is going to equal the integral from a to b of um, delta a dot some path. Okay. Um, so we may as well make this path as easy as possible and just go a little bit around a circle, right? Go from here to here, because uh, this is in the theta direction. So um, we'll integrate from zero to theta times this delta a mu naught k big R squared over little r, right? Um, we have theta dot theta, and if we come out here to um, wherever, uh, we have r d theta out here. Okay, so these two r's cancel, and so psi is going to be mu naught k big R squared times theta. And that's it, that's what our gauge is. Oops. That's our gauge here. And we were able to find it. And this basically is equivalent to, to um, normalizing the potential energy at the ground to be zero. We're setting it equal to be zero there. Um, it's just convenient to not use this, right? It's convenient to use um, the mu naught k r ln r over r because this doesn't actually affect the problem. Only this, only this part does. Um, everything else is just window dressing. Maybe there's something in there why we'd want to put that in, but when we start doing um, work, start doing actual work, it's going to disappear. So I just wanted to show you a little bit with that vector potential um, and everything that goes along with it. It's a very important concept. It gets more important as you go farther along. If you do a lot of waves, much more important. Um, so do keep it in mind, um, but you know, don't sweat it too much right now. I mean, try to get a conceptual understanding of what's going on. Later on in life, it might turn important, but it's not really that important this week. Um, the only thing that's important is that it's on the homework and the test. So, I mean, and how important is a homework and a test, right? So, I think um, that's about it. Um, thanks for listening. I will see you in class.